it's raining off and on today. I mean, uh, there's no getting anything done to the transom. So I figured the best thing we can do today is walk around, explore a little bit. I'll show you the boat yard. And uh, yeah, you guys can see where I am and, and what it's like. Uh, I can't think of any better way to spend a rainy day than walking around looking at boats. So come on, let's go. You might remember in the tropical storm, that guy that was with me, Houston, I had to take him to the store. That's his catamaran. I think it's a 69 catamaran. Pretty cool boat. Take you guys over the travel lift in the water. And as you can see out there, it is getting pretty low. The tide is out. So this is going to be, when we splash, this is going to be the challenging part here. There's only four feet of water at low tide. So, <laughs> not enough. I draw six, six and a half feet to be safe. But you see, I mean, that's just straight mud right there that boat's sitting in the mud if you look over there those boats are sitting in the mud but when we come out it's going to be a little challenging because as you can see there is not a lot of distance between here and there it's maybe 80 feet something like that and you have this big old sandbar here so, it is going to be challenging. I've never splashed here before, so I don't know. But uh, pretty much, we're just going to have to go in the water and then immediately turn here and hug this side as close as possible to this catamaran, those docks over there, and hug it. And then make our way out. There are boats anchored out there, but you see sometimes... Like, for instance, if you see this guy, see there, looking out, you see the direction that this guy is, this guy is, that guy. Now look at the direction of the water, right? It's barely moving. But you see him? He's a ground. You can see, obviously, he's a ground. And that boat probably has a fin keel. So, anchoring out there is kind of risky business. None of this is really charted very well. Uh, I was looking at it. So, probably going to have to just get in the water and zoom out. Is what I'm thinking. Just get out of here. Most likely I'll find a place to dock around here somewhere. Especially right when we splash. Because, you know, the boat's going to take on water until she takes up. That's kind of a, a wooden boat thing. It's gonna, I don't know how bad, but I'm guessing she's going to leak like a sieve. You know, I don't know. That there, that's the office, kind of. Office slash shop. This place, it's pretty cool. They've got it going on. At, at this boatyard, they don't do any boat work. They don't work on boats here. They don't, they don't paint them. They don't do engine work. All they do is haul, splash, launch, and that's it. This guy, if you look at this boat, this guy was a neighbor of mine in Savannah. I actually did some work on the inside of that boat. Did a bunch of varnish work for him. Yeah, it's a big place. It's weird because there are no docks. There just aren't any. You know, and there's those two little docks and they're full with almost no boats. But there are 124 boats on the hard here. So, it's a it's a big place. Show you a couple of a couple of neat wooden boats around that I've seen. Pipe's gone out. There's nothing left in it. Done. <laughs> oh well. So check this guy out. This, I believe, is also a 67. It's a John Alden design. Met the guy that has her. He's 
interested in selling her, but she, she's actually not in too bad a shape. I looked at her, you can see, for some reason they put Tyvek on there. But here in the quarters, there's a little bit of rod on the inside I saw. But beautiful boat. I'm not really one for power boats, but I suppose if I had one, it'd be something like this. Gorgeous, and the inside's gorgeous. Yeah. And right near her, we've got this guy. This is an old wheeler. Look at this thing. It's in, it's in pretty rough shape, but they've been doing some work. The bottom was fiberglassed, and somebody's come along and ripped off the fiberglass, but as you can see, Look at that. Unfortunately, I think they did a little more damage than help. I don't know. This thing's in bad shape. But these are pretty rare boats. It's a behemoth. It's humongous. Just, just crazy. While we're looking, Lewin, I'm going to show you my favorite wooden boat here, besides mine, of course. It is awesome. But it's it's a good walk. I mean, this place is big. Oh, here's another little neat wooden boat. Some guy was working on, check this out. I like their makeshift garage. <laughs> Put it under a catamaran. This, I think this is a 59, I wanna say. Something like that. Pretty neat. Once again, it's a little power boat, but how cool is that? Beautiful. Just gorgeous. I think it's 59, but look at these fins. I mean, yeah. If I had a little launch, it'd be something like this. This is cool, cool, cool. Skipper craft. Awesome. I just, I love that deco design and the fins. So cool. Uh-oh, I heard thunder. All right, moving on. Let's make our way a long way over to the other wooden boat. There are a couple around here. It's especially rare to find wooden boats other than shrimp boats this far south. I mean, we're in southeast Georgia, so it's not common, but there, there are a few at this yard, so that's cool. I, I like seeing it, you know, eventually, someday, that won't be the case. Now, there are actually a few wooden boats, unfortunately, that I'm going to show you. They're getting cut up. It's pretty sad, but I suppose everything, everything comes to pass. But, uh, oh, I got to show you this thing. This is the craziest steel boat I may have ever seen, but I kind of like it just because it's so weird. <laughs> You ever seen anything like this? It's crazy. The thing is just nuts. Look at that thing. Holy cow. Big steel monster. It's just, I don't know. It, I guess it looks pretty rugged. Well, there comes the wind. Oh yeah, look at that. We're gonna get hammered. It's coming. Yeah, look at this. Just nuts. Never seen anything like it. All right, let's wait. Let's make our way over to the other wooden boat. My favorite one at the yard, besides mine. Uh, and then I'll show you the the boat graveyard, which it's a, it's a depressing place, but. I don't know. Like the bog of eternal stench. <laughs> it's really the bog of eternal termites. It's some of the damage from termites over there is just unreal, which is scary to me. Thus far, I have not seen any termites on my boat. They are in the yard. I have had them land on me. I keep a constant vigil about it. Um, so that's the last thing I need. I see a boat like this and I get all excited. I, I don't know what this is. First, I thought it was a Hans Christian, but it's not. I, you know, I saw it from a distance. I'm like, oh, awesome, look at that wooden boat. But it's not. Aluminum mass, fiberglass boat. Similar to my old Formosa, you know, it just looks wood. 
I think, you know, for a fiberglass boat, it's beautiful, but not wood. Oh boy, look at that. The trees are blowing. Well, it's gonna rain. Now this is an interesting boat. Plywood with glass. You, I'm sure you remember Hachi, my, uh, my buddy. That's the owner. It's the owner's boat. Yeah. Hachi's the three-legged husky that comes and hangs out with me sometimes. And I actually interviewed him. I'm going to edit the video and get a video of him working on his boat. Real nice guy named Robert. Robert is missing his leg, and he, uh, he sails. Oh, yeah, it's raining. I'm getting rained on. That's all right. We're almost to that boat I told you about. Got to show you. It's cool. Oh, man, getting hammered now. It's really raining. Well, that's all right. Can't do any work. A little tidal stream. Man, now I'm getting soaked. <laughs> oh, well. Not the first time. There it is. Look at this. 1911 Dickies Yall. Made in Scotland. The guy that owns it is a 92-year-old man named George. Real nice guy. He, uh, he was hauled up, I think, two years ago, they said. Or maybe even earlier. Earlier this year. Something like that. He was sinking, taking on water. But... The boat is a hundred and ten years old. I mean, and it's really not in bad shape. I mean, there's some really bad areas. But really, she's pretty dang solid. There's the spars. But what a beautiful boat. Her name is Joybird, and there's actually a, uh, a log online from 1911 from the owner. They made a, they made a passage back to the yard. I, I want to say... Maybe from Scandinavia or something that made the passage back 800 miles. And you can find that log online. But what a beautiful boat. So cool. Look at this thing. Here's where the issues are. The decks are in really bad shape, unfortunately. But this, the dead wood, is pretty gone. Not, not impossible to fix, but look. The rudder's chewed. And a dead wood. Look at that. Yeah, it needs help. But boy, is she pretty. Just gorgeous. Yeah, beautiful. All right, moving on. We're going to go to the boat graveyard. And this is where things get sad, but, well, it's what it is, I reckon. Just can't do anything in this dang rain. Every day. Rain, 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 rain. Every day. That's driving me crazy. Yeah, oh boy. Rainy, rain, rain. Okay, here's the boat graveyard. There it is. It's a coal molded boat. It's called Junket. It's actually some stuff I want to get off of that boat. Uh, maybe the rub rails. I don't have any rub rails. <clears throat> They're just going to cut all these up. As you can see, they, they bury them. They bury them in the ground so they don't have to waste stands. But yeah, the rub rails I want to get off of there probably. I don't have any rub rails on mine. So, it'd be nice to have them. Look at this though. Where boats go to die. Buried in the ground. Not going to make much way that way. I guess no leeway either. Look at this. I don't know what it is. It's like a Formosa or an Island Trader, which is my favorite kind of fiberglass boat. But, buddy, I have never seen a fiberglass boat in its poor condition, ever. Look at this thing. Termite damage like I've never seen before. And, like, the termites get so hungry, they're just like, well, we'll, we'll, we'll take a little nibble of this fiberglass, too. I'll just eat some of her. I mean, look at that. That's crazy. See the damage? I mean, what a beautiful boat this was. This is sad. I mean, 
I love that balustrade tackle like mine has, like my Formosa had, but look at the sides buckling. I mean, this is done. You know, I mean, I hate to say any boat is unsavable, but pretty, pretty close. And then you have this guy. Look at this thing. They started messing with it. And when they did, the transom just collapsed. It's made of mahogany. 56, maybe? 1956? I don't remember what it is. I don't think it's a Chris Craft. I don't, I don't know what this is. I'm not really up on power boats too much. But man, when this was in its heyday, can you imagine? Imagine pulling into any marina anywhere in the world in this thing. You would be like Mr. King. I mean, look at the deco design and the touches there. Wowzers. I mean, we're talking just beautiful. It's funny, though. Like, the thickness of the planks of this is maybe three-quarter. I mean, just nothing. It's, it's weird. I mean, it's such a big boat. But, yeah. Somebody started some work at one point. They stripped it down. And they were going to research it. And, and supposedly when the boat got here, it was in really good shape. And this was a few years ago. And the guy stripped all the paint and everything off. And he was going to redo it. But he got to this point and then stopped. And then it's just sat here. Bare wood to weather. Look at that guy. Holy cow. He's gnarly looking. See him? Keep an eye out on the boat for everybody. Yeah. And then, here you got all these crazy paths off in the woods. <laughs> it's pretty cool. They have, they've got acres and acres that way. I think he said they have room for 200 more boats. I mean, just incredible. Look at this. It's beautiful in here. It's gorgeous. I guess, I mean, we can't do any work on the boat, right? So, adventure time. <laughs> Why not? Oh, man. Yeah, I really like this boatyard, though. It's been really cool. I mean, I've been in a lot of boatyards, but these guys have it going on. They've made their own cradles. They... they I'll see if I can show you one. Like, they, instead of putting every boat on jack stands, a lot of boats are on cradles. And they they made a vehicle that drives under. They, I mean, they built it. The guy's, the guy's eight-year-old kid welds half this stuff. I mean, it's incredible. But they just drive this big machine. It's not a forklift. It's a big vehicle. And they pick up the cradles and take them wherever they need to go. I mean... So they don't even need the travel lift for half the boats. It's cool. You know, that's not a bad idea. Take a boat like that, plunk it in the woods, cut a big hole in the side, make a door. Be an awesome little cabin, wouldn't it? Shoot, I'd I'd stay in that. Who cares? It'd be awesome. That would be awesome. Man, listen to that thunder. Well, I guess we're going to stick in the woods for a minute. It's a little drier. Well, this is quite an interesting adventure. Trapes around in the woods and looking at boats. I mean, why not? Can't work. Might as well do this. This is where they pile up all the hopes and dreams of the people that own the boats in the graveyard. That's that's all their hopes and dreams over there. Now, in a big old pile. But it's just gorgeous here. I mean, beautiful. It's a rural, small town. I like that. No hustle, no bustle. Ooh, getting wet. Holy cow. But, what a cool place. I almost want to pitch my hammock back there. I got an awesome hammock tent. Whoa. There it is. And it is hammering rain. 
Dang it. Well. Huh. No choice. It's going to be wet, I guess. <laughs> it's what it is at this point. Check out this catamaran when we get there. It's called a warum. A warum, I want to say. It's like a, it's a Polynesian design. It's really weird, but awesome. And I think it's, it's once again, wood with glass over it. Check it out. There he is. Where do you see it? Where do you see the cool things about it? Look, it's all... It's all held together with line. From what I understand, the, the designer... I don't, I don't know much about these. I should, I guess. Somebody, I was talking to somebody and they were like, you don't know what that is? And I'm like, well, I don't know. But uh, look at this. It's all based off of Polynesian designs. The rudder... There's no pintles, no gudgeons. Held on with just line. I mean, and look at the rake of the mast. Look those masts are just raked like crazy. I mean, raked like a like an old schooner. Look. Wow. <laughs> I guess this is a way to spend a day. I mean. My pipe's getting wet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in my pocket, I think. And see, I mean, it's just this place. This place goes on forever. It's humongous. Oh man, it is really hammering now. Oh, what a day for a walk. That's kind of how it goes, though, when you work on when you're working on a boat. You know, the only time you get away from the boat is when it's raining. You know, I spend a three and a half months in Puerto Rico working on just a gorgeous boat. I actually sailed the boat down to Puerto Rico uh, for the owners back in 2019, I think. But uh, yeah, I went down to help them basically teach them how to how to do the work themselves. And they're, man, they are just rocking along. Uh, and so yeah, I was down there, but it was the same thing, you know, the. I saw the only thing I saw in Puerto Rico was the boat, pretty much. Boat and the marina, unless it was raining, you know. When it rained, well, then we got to go to Home Depot, <laughs> so or the grocery store. So I got to see that, but uh, yeah, that's just how it is, you know. When it's when it's hammering rain, that's when you get to explore and see stuff. Otherwise, you need to be working. Check this out. This is I wouldn't even know you're in a boatyard back here. How cool is this? Just wait. I'm like, how cool is that? <laughs> Dang shipping container. <laughs> no. They have like an apartment thing back here? In this workshop? But it's got just a little yard. Barbecue grill. And then just an awesome view of the marsh. And boats out there. Yeah. Pretty freaking cool. I guess if you're stuck on the hard and you're not sailing, no better way to spend a rainy day than walking around looking at boats, I reckon. <laughs> I like it. Why not? Oh man, it is hammering. Well, is what it is. Yeah, not bad though. Pretty place. Real pretty place. Well, we're almost back. Fun day. <laughs> Rainy day, but fun nonetheless. Oh man, I'm soaked. It's all right. Well, good to have you guys along. We're back at good old Shalimar. Oh, looks like my canvas is blown up a little bit. One of my first videos on the boat was actually hanging that. What that's for is exactly what it's doing right now. I hung that there so that way it'll hold water. It'll absorb 
and it holds water a lot longer than than the paint on the planks will and so it, it a couple times a day I'll spray it down and that way it holds moisture against the hull and it'll keep the planks from drying out too much at least that's the plan the uh, bowsprit looks good yeah bowsprit looks great hanging on man I love my boat I just love it I love the lines I love the shape I look at all these other boats and I'm like, yeah, these are cool and that's pretty and that's awesome. Nothing is like mine. Look at this. I mean, yeah, look at it. Look at the tarp and the canvas I and mean, you can't hardly see anything. But she's just beautiful. I can't wait to splash. I mean, I just want to get in the freaking water, you know? But, oh well. Everything in due time. Anyway, thanks for... <laughs> walking around in the rain with me. It's been fun.